you often hear about the road less traveled, and if you live out in the country of the rural Midwest like we do, you likely find yourself surrounded by miles and miles of those seldom traveled roads. For us, living in the country means a landscape that resembles a giant quilt. Large squares and rectangles of farm fields, patches of woods, and little green islands of grass marking each farm or homestead. The squares and rectangles are all held together by a grid-like network of narrow country roads. Long, straight, flat, mostly empty. I've lived on one of these my entire life. My dad always called our place the last stop before nowhere. The bulk of the traffic was usually from the school bus, the mailman, and of course all the local farmers. In the last decade or so though, it seems as if the road less traveled has been traveled more and more frequently by these things. ATVs, UTVs, RTVs, gators, rangers, mules, chuck wagons, side-by-sides. Everybody has a different name for them. Sometimes they're used on the farm. Sometimes they're used for real, actual work. Sometimes they're just the easiest way to get to the mailbox or to do chores. But lately, they seem to be the best way to tour the patchwork of our country neighborhood. We began to feel jealous seeing so many of our neighbors cruise by on their little buggies in the evenings. So, of course, it wasn't long before we wanted one of our own. Coat, stick, drive, DIY. If you've seen any of the videos here on this channel, it probably didn't take you long to realize I am a bit of a tinkerer. But what might not seem so obvious though is the degree to which I have been cursed, or blessed, with the desire to be frugal. Being a frugal tinkerer has been both a source of pride and pain in my life. I'm always buying items that need fixed up to either keep for myself or try to flip for a small profit. But it's an incredible sense of accomplishment to find something junky and make it worthy again. It feels even better when you can make a little money at it. I've never bought a new vehicle or a tractor. I've never made payments on anything. Always fixer-uppers. Sometimes I like a project so much I end up with multiples. Not sometimes, oftentimes. Okay, most of the times. So when a frugal tinkerer is offered a free electric golf cart, he is compelled to take it. I'm a sucker for anything free. It ran when we parked it. It's always the hopeful promise that hooks the frugal tinkerer. If I can just undo the years of hardship endured from mother nature and neglect, this should be an easy fix. And with only $900 of new batteries, I found the promise to be true in this case, as this 36 volt club car ran perfectly. So I set to work at putting lipstick on yet another pig I had drug home. Are you sure you want an electric golf cart though? My wife assured me that that is what she wanted. So be it. It wasn't long before I had duplicate projects again. It happens every time. I combined the best components from both carts to build up our cruiser and then sold the second one with all the leftovers for about even money. Basically, I got the good stuff I wanted for free then. I ordered and installed all the essential golf cart parts. A lift kit, fancy wheels, a windshield, seat, headlights. I tried a rattle can paint job just to see how it would turn out. Not bad. With all the parts and batteries, I still had much less in it than just buying something similar. Or at least that's what I tell myself. Besides, you can't buy that sense of frugal pride that comes from doing it yourself. We're happy it was electric. It's quiet and free of exhaust fumes. My daughters are going to learn how to drive because of this thing, too. It's a great yard cart and wheelbarrow for my wife. On one of our first trips, we went over 12 miles with battery life left to spare. Those new Trojan batteries should last 7 or 8 years if you take good care of them. So we had a long time before we had to worry about any of those going bad. The golf cart sits in our heated garage over the winter. So usually in the spring, I top off the batteries with water, give it a fresh charge, and off we go. Nothing too serious in the way of maintenance. This year, however, when wanting to get it out for the first time, we discovered that it was completely dead and wouldn't even take a charge from the large golf cart charger. Matter of fact, the charger wouldn't even attempt to turn on, which made me wonder if the charger was broken. So at that point, I wasn't sure if it was a battery problem or a charger problem. I was just gonna have to investigate. This is the part of the story where we begin to talk about the pain associated with being a frugal tinkerer. This is the rise of the frugal demon. 
I know that the lifespan is nearly up on these batteries, but I'll be darned if I'm not going to still try to squeeze every last ounce of life out of them before giving up. I at least needed to figure out why it is completely dead and won't charge. Maybe there's a simple fix at hand and I don't need another what is now $1,200 worth of batteries. So I got a baseline of total overall voltage. It was less than 5 volts across all 6 batteries. Oh boy, that's not good. Well, I think that the gauge is probably working. And the voltage is actually low enough that I think the charger probably won't even turn on, so I'm guessing the charger is still okay at this point. I wanted to check the voltage of each battery individually. 1.6, 1.7, 1.6, 1.2, 0.2, 0.3. Hmm. Two of the batteries have much lower voltage, so... These four batteries on this side each have a voltage of about 1.7 to 1.6. That's obviously really low. They should each be six volts. But these two batteries down here at this end, for some reason, those two are the culprits. They have, they're both about 0.3 volts. So something happened. Probably one of those batteries is bad for sure. This might mean all new batteries. I'm gonna see if I can just charge those two batteries really, really slowly. I think I can charge both of them at 12 volts if I hook them together, and then we'll see what happens from there. But then I gotta charge the rest of them too. I think these will charge. These four are probably good. Something's wrong with one of those. I got this charger free as a gift. It's a smart charger. What that means is though, it's so smart, it won't turn on either because it won't sense enough voltage. So my only other charger is this little 12 volt trickle charger we use on the toy gators. Maybe I could slowly charge two batteries hooked together at 12 volts with this little trickle charger then. It won't even kick on. The frugal demon in me says borrow instead of buy. My father-in-law's charger even has a six volt setting and it'll just turn on without trying to be too smart. So sometimes old school is the way to go. Oh yeah, projects give rise to other projects. That's just any given Sunday around here, but nothing the tinkerer can't handle. I'll spend a good part of the entire next week charging all six batteries individually. I only want the charger to be turned on when I'm at home. So one battery per evening from the time I get home to when I go to bed. Well, each battery did take a charge and it appears to be holding six volts. So. Now I have the confidence to make that investment in putting water in each one of these, and then I'll attempt to charge it with the big 36 volt charger. Am I the only one that can let three light bulbs burn out before I notice it? Another Sunday project within a project. Ah yes, when you replace all the old mismatched compact fluorescents on the front porch with new matching LEDs, the frugal demon doesn't let you throw away the still working CFLs. In this case, it's my wife's frugal demon. Hers is worse than mine. Nobody sees the mismatch in the garage though. They'll do just fine in here, and we'll get to squeeze every last drop of light out of these bulbs. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, I know I'm not supposed to screw the man with the switch on. I guess I'm just living on the edge today. You're all done. Yay. All right, back to the golf cart. Clean up all that green gunky stuff. I treat the terminals with this stuff. It works really good, but you have to cover all the exposed metals. It's kind of like sunscreen. If not, it makes that green gunky stuff. All right, here's the last connection. I'd expect to see close to a full battery indicator now. All right, let's check total voltage. 37 hmm. volts. 37 volts across all six batteries. Maybe there is still something wrong with the gauge. All right, I'm just gonna try to charge it anyway. All right, well that did something. The gauge is full. Cart works. I think it's time for a test drive. You know, I can't, I can't fully explain why this is so enjoyable. You can easily talk while going down the road. You can smell things other than exhaust. You can sneak up on the neighbors. You can just slow down and enjoy some family time together. You can have a closer look at things not visible from the car. These batteries might live to see one more summer, or they could be dead within a couple weeks, I'm not sure. After a few charge cycles, they seem to be working just fine. Maybe I just needed to charge them once in the winter is all. That's, that's probably a good practice. The frugal demon in me insists that we stay the course until the last drop of usefulness has been consumed from these batteries. A week's worth of tinkering might have saved me some money for now. For now. Truth be told, I probably won't give up on this thing until it leaves us stranded somewhere. But I could always use the exercise anyway. What? Come get it! Yeah. What is that? <laughs> I want Christine!